tabletop RPG where our characters decide what they want to do and the dice make it happen. Norvald is a homebrew campaign set in a cold, dreary land of snow and warlords. Um, So season one began after the death of Carl Carlson. Our intrepid adventurers have escorted their chieftain to the Great Moot to decide who will be their next king. Things, however, went horribly wrong. Season two, our weary travellers journey south to inform the brothers Loxon of the massacre at Thryn. We're joined by heroes, Ulf, the half-elven ranger, played by Ad, Angelus, the human rogue, played by Dave, and Giles, the half-elven cleric of Next, played by Lee. I'm your Dungeon Master Paris. Let's play. Sweet. So, last session. Vigo. Uh, kind of instructed you all well well, he didn't kind of, he did instruct you all to journey south and carry a message to the Brothers Loxon Um, your instructions were very simple you just to take the southern road uh, the old road Um, down south and you find yourselves picking through um, lots and lots of different types of um, derelict camps the bugbears, the wargs, the giants they kind of ravaged everything um so you guys have found yourself heading south from the decimated host at Thryn. You found yourself picking through the ruins of a specific camp on the southern road. You find several corpses lining the roadside ditch, stripped of worldly possessions, and blackened trees encircled charred and blackened pile in the centre. What do you guys do? Um... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's been a while since we played it. Uh, <laughs> um... I had to change Ooh. my head to um, Batchy during that speech. <laughs> <laughs> That's, <fine. laughs> That's why I'm not saying anything. <laughs> Season two is kicking off well, guys. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're so, doing well. So, what, what was there? Something in the middle of the road? <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. So you've journeyed, you've journeyed south on the old road. Yeah. And you've come across one of the many derelict camps. Right. So this one is looks like it's been burnt to a cinder. The trees are blackened. There's piles of bodies in the dish, ditch scattering it. And you guys are kind of just um, have, have stopped at this scene south of Thryn. Okay. Um, <clears throat> can we check to see if there's any anyone alive? Does it look like yeah. it was burnt recently or a while ago? Or... Can I get a perception from you all, please, to determine yeah. this? Here we go. Perception, that's... Uh... Oh, that will be a 26 yes. for me. Uh, 26, nice one, Ad. Perception is 4 on the left. Perception plus 5, I got 20. 20? Lee, what did you get? I got oh, 5 plus 4, so that's 9. 9. So, Lee, you're looking around and you don't see much. You're kind of poking around through the ashes, having a look. You, you, there's nothing really to find for you. Um, Dave, you're looking around at the back of blackened trees and you notice that this is actually quite relatively recent. So possibly not that long ago that this camp was raided and burned and and, and the bodies pile up relatively fresh. Ad, as you begin to search your body to check that they're alive, you notice a symbol carved on the forehead of one of the bodies. Um, I'll move to the symbol now. (laughs) So you notice that symbol in red carved in the forehead of the first person. You turn over the next person. That's that symbol again and again and again and again. Carved with clearly some sort of, you know, knife or, or, or some sort of cutting implement in each and every person's head in the ditch. Would any of us have any clue what that symbol might be? Um, can I get a linguistics check from those of you who have a linguistic what? skill? <laughs> That's a new one. Ooh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Lingu- oh, I do I not have, have that. that. That's I have fine. linguistics for Dwarven. I have linguistics for Dwarven. Uh, can I get your general linguistics? There should be... Are you, you're, uh, sorry, your linguistics, where it says Dwarven, that'll be the language you've acquired through your linguistic right. skill. Um, it's just a plus five that you've got for it, oh, yeah. um, Dave. I don't know if you have a linguistic skill. No, you don't. So 
No. Dave is Dave. Dave's the uh, cunning linguist. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> so, D twenty. You want me to roll? Yes, please. D twenty. Oh, I've just lost that D twenty. I'm going to roll another one. <laughs> <laughs> Life can get expensive with those dice. <laughs> I roll fourteen. So, so nineteen altogether. It's quite difficult to determine the source of this language. You think by the look of it, it's some caricature, uh, character based language. The the writing, it's it's clearly something not of this plane. It doesn't look like, you know, dwarven, it doesn't look like common, it, it, it it's some sort of pictorial language or, or character language that is is from an, an a, a society that, that doesn't belong to the, the planet you're on. Is it a wasp? Or the planet. Is it a wasp? <laughs> it's, a wasp. <laughs> it's crudely carved symbols. Okay. So yeah, from otherworldly sure. symbols, then. Other otherworldly symbols, yeah. Not from not from this plane of existence. Ooh, okay. That's all you can gather from it, Dave. So, um, so this village, it's burnt. This village. So it's not a village, it's a small encampment. Encampments, so th really, there were lots yeah. of encampments around Thryn. You stumbled one on, on the old road south. Um, and you found that all these bodies are piled up and they all have these carvings on their, their forehead. Mm. Um, okay. So there's nobody alive looking around, they're all dead. No, right. not that you recognise. Well, could it be anything to do with any type of religion? Could I potentially do a religion check to see if I recognise what it is? Yeah, I, 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 I'd take a knowledge religion check, yeah. Yeah, okay. Let me just remind myself what my knowledge religion is. Okay, it's three. Push out there, John. Push out. Yeah, that's 19 plus three, so 22. You've recognised something similar before. And you remember combing through old books with your, your master Niles and finding a page on the worship of, of creatures known as outsiders. So outsiders are creatures who don't belong to this, this plane of existence. And there's a whole range of outsiders. So angels are outsiders, demons are outsiders, um, elementals are outsiders. So it belongs to one of these categories of worship. Um, but you just remember vaguely in your head that these uh, these 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 characters are, are often associated with those, but but you don't really remember much more. You didn't spend that long of it. And Nex isn't uh, you know Nex isn't interested in these sorts of things. Okay. So, with that being said, then Giles, could you tell us all that sort of stuff? Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you that. However, it's quite useless. Okay. <laughs> well, um, necessarily because the whole place is. Burnt. We, we, you think this might be an elemental? So it's an elemental fire thing. That's attacked these people. Could be. Or somebody who worships an elemental. Or a fire starter. <laughs> Twisting no trees. <laughs> um. Um. So we do we see like. It... Do they do these appear to be on like a p specific warpath? So it's all em em um, it's all emanating from the center. Like there's been a large bonfire of things piled up in the middle. Um, and in fact, actually, add as you've as you're sort of poking through this fire because of your perception, you see the corner of something in the ash, like a strap of some sort, a leather strap. Okay. Um... I'll uh, pull the strap out, I guess. Yeah. So, <laughs> as you pull on the strap, uh, a small pouch comes out, and it's a it's a big, thick leather pouch that's sort of charred on the outside, um, but it looks mostly intact. Okay. Um... Now, do I just want to open this pouch? If I chuck this pouch over to Angelus, can I say, give that a check over before opening it, just to, uh, just in case there's anything dodgy going on. Oh, sound. <laughs> uh, what, you throw the pouch at me, do you? Yeah. Okay. 
Okay. Can I um, check for traps or anything? Normal? Oh, yeah, of course you can. Um, nice. So what you'd be looking for is you'd be having a perception, um, but your trap finding is plus six because of your level as a rogue. So it's d20 plus six, please. Okay, I roll... I rolled five. <laughs> um, so 11 in total. Completely fine. It looks all right to you. Cool. There's definitely nothing wrong with this. <laughs> Open um, it up, Angelus. Okay, I'll um, I'll slowly open it up. Okay. As you peel it back, you begin to see the corner of a, a small piece of paper rolled up. Yeah, I don't have that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was doing so well. <laughs> okay, so I'll pull the piece of paper. Can I pull the piece of paper out? Yeah, of course you can. There looks like a, 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 a scribbled image on it. Does it okay. match the image we found carved on people's heads? No, oh, this looks more like a crude drawing of directions. Um, okay. So you kind of notice that it's that there's a little note for for Thrin on it. There's little dots for where the old road goes south, and there's a mark of where the, where there's a bridge. There's other little dots running up um, to the 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 right, and there's this little part circled, and it says lodge. Shall we uh, yeah, follow fun. that uh, follow that little map? Let's take the bait. Let's do. It. Go Let's on. Do it. <laughs> yeah. It's not like it's ever gotten so into trouble as before, is it? We've always been. Okay. DM, quick chat. I don't know if I've asked you this before. Mm. What does knowledge dungeoneering? What is that knowledge for? So it's for dungeon diving primarily. So um, it's about identifying specific monsters. It's a, uh, that would sort of live in dungeons. Um, it's about gears relate related to it. Um, okay. I'm also going to have a Google as well, just to uh, double check. <laughs> I just noticed I'm nothing. I was like, I wonder what that what it actually is. <laughs> right. So knowledge dungeoneering is related to aberrations. Ca things that live in caverns, oozers, and to do with spelunking. So basically all the skills that you'd need to trawl through a nice dungeon. Okay, cool. The obvious then. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And one other follow-up question. You know, your conditional skill modifiers, are they already applied? Yes. Yeah, cool. And that's it. I have no more questions. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Good question. Marvellous. No good question. Good. Shall we start heading towards this uh, lodge then? Okay. Yeah. So you guys begin to head down the old road, get back to it, um, and continue the way down because that's what the that's what the instructions say um, to get to the bridge. But instead, veer off right and follow the gorge um, to the side. As you begin to travel, you notice that start, snow starts to come down quite heavily, um, a lot more heavily than it has done in the past couple of hours that you've been on the road heading south, a breeze picks up, and very slowly you find yourself at the start of... Well, I'll tell you what, can I get a survival check from everyone? Ooh. It's going to get real. Uh, 22. Oh, shit, my survival's nothing. <laughs> uh, survival. Survival's two, so that's... Uh... Okay. Um, mine's 16. 17. Okay. Oh, no, it's 17 plus 2, isn't it? So, yeah. 19. So, Lee, Leon and Dave, you think it's quite hard to predict the weather. Um, you think it might be okay, or there might be a spell of snow. And you're convinced there's going to be a blizzard coming your way within the next few hours, and the temperature begins to drop. Can I get a um, constitution check? Uh, sorry, a fortitude check from you all. So fortitude lives underneath your ability scores. Um, oh, yeah. So d20 plus your fortitude. Plus three. Plus three. Um, 16 plus 3, 19 for me. Okay. 
13. 8. Ad and Lee, can you both roll a d6 for me, please? Sorry, say again. Sorry, I was just reading some of my uh, d6, please. Because oh, I've just got a thing that says under feats, endurance, fortitude saves made to avoid old non lethal damage from hot or cold environments. Oh, yeah, that would be this. I got one. You got one. Yeah. One one's good. You need to take one non lethal damage from the cold. Oh um cool. add your endurance to weather. You get a plus four bonus. Okay. Yeah, fine. Um yeah, you pass, add. So roll thirteen no plus four, would that be yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get the extra plus nice. four on that. No worries. Uh, well spotted. Um so Lee, you the others are fine, but you begin to feel really cold, and you feel that you know the tips of your fingers start to go a little blue, and the wind is starting to bite at you. Lovely. So I'm here shaking away. Are these guys going to do anything? Or uh, yeah, do we notice this that Lee's struggling? <laughs> um, unless Lee says, I, d I don't think you're going to be able to know un unless you do a perception and notice him shivering. How how attentive are you all? I mean, they might notice us for giving a bit of bleeding touch to her. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Do we? Do we that... have like a? Is there like oh, a passive perception? Naturally, do we notice anything or? Um. Do, do what's it... everyone's perception scores? Um. Mine is a plus ten. Wow, mine's a plus five. I think Ad, you're probably likely to notice that Lee's shivering his little boots off okay. behind you. Um, I haven't got anything to help him with. <laughs> uh, from from this map, can we ascertain quite how far away we are from it? It's not far. Possibly uh, an, another hour or so um, to get to the bridge. And then from the look of it, it's probably going to be about half an hour um, traveling on the, for you guys, it would be the east side of the gorge um, all the way up to the lodge. So it's So it's about... It, it, it's it's probably just shy of, of two hours. And would I know so about, about the same I... time as this full on blizzard's rocking up? <laughs> yeah, it's um, getting close. Suck it up, Buttercup. Let's get going. Mm. <laughs> Am I likely to survive this last couple of hours? It depends how the the blizzard picks up. Um, but can I get a perception from you all? Ooh. <laughs> Nineteen. Thirteen for mine. Trying to remember what Matt's perception is. Uh, Seventeen. Wonderful. So you guys come to well you guys find yourself while you're taking the road down. It's not been long, but you found a nice little um camp now the camp is is pretty much bare um however there is one thing as you begin to get close add you notice um as you begin to get near the camp there are a couple of frozen bodies around this campsite right i haven't marked them but they're like buried under the thick snow you notice <laughs> like the odd hand there the odd head there and it looks like there are marks like the the bodies have been dragged across here but quite conveniently, there's an upturned wagon to provide some shelter, and there's an unlit fire that clearly okay. haven't been, you know, clearly haven't been finished. So the, the bodies don't look like they were dead from the elements, and they were dead from whoever passed through. Uh, can I get a heel check on one of them, so you, for you to have a look at the, uh, you know, your knowledge of what these, um, what's going on with these bodies? Uh, Sixteen. Yeah. So yeah, you you notice that there's external wounds on these these humans, um, though these bodies are frozen through. Um, so yeah, they, you think maybe based on the wounds they died elsewhere. Right. Um, guess we'll uh, get into the camp before Gels freezes his butt. I'd be. Yeah, I've got some flint and stone hands as well, so I'll make a fire. Okay, cool. 
Wait, do I have a function stone before I go off? Um, while I'm here, might as well. Are yeah. these bodies buried very much? Uh, mostly, yeah. Mostly. Would it would it take much for me to check them over? No, they're. I mean, they're under the the, the snow's a few inches thick, but they're sort of you know. It, it's one of those landscapes where it's the ground's a bit mushy. They've easily gone into some mud. The snow's gone over, so they they look a bit more buried than they actually are. But it's easy to scrape away, and actually, you can see that there's a um, there's a body under there that you can check it. I'll check them check them over then. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, four heads are the same. Right. Anything Still got that carving pockets. in. Uh, nothing in their pockets. These nothing. these corpses are stripped to the very basics: tunics, um, loincloths, cloaks. Cloak. Boots are gone as well. Right. Are you guys huddled around the fire? Could you place your markers so you are um, you're there? Oh, I definitely need to be by that fire. I'm shaking yeah. it. Cool. So <laughs> the fire. I'll start today. The fire begins. Whoosh. And Lee, you start to feel a hell of a lot warmer. And you guys stop um, having to make constitution saves, fortitude saves from the blizzard. The br blizzard is still mild at the moment. Um, so, you're not entirely sure whether it's going to pick up, but at the moment it's, it sort of seems to be stable. No, um, we're just standing around here until the blizzard passes over. Well, I, was going to, well, I don't know. There's not, is there much to shout from it? No. Look how bad's this blizzard? Because we got an opt in hearing about another hour, and we got about another hour to the cabin. Do you want to give me a survival yeah. check to see if you can gauge the direction of the blizzard and how long it'll be? Uh, Twenty-one for me, all of us, like or just add. Yeah, you can all you can all do it. Um, um yeah, yeah, by all by all means. Um, Ad, you look at the sky, and the sky is starting to look thick. You can't put an exact time on it, but. You know, for you guys, it's, it's probably thinking about sort of the time you woke up, the time it's taking you to travel south. It's probably about one o'clock. You think by nightfall, it's going to be really bad, really bad, extreme. Um, but it, 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 it looks like it's going to get worse. But by nightfall, it'll be terrible. OK, so it's about what about one o'clock now, did you say? Lunch it's about one o'clock. Yeah. I say we get moving. I think I was just yeah. going to say. Well, can we can we check the wagon over and check some of the bodies, see what kind of stuff they have on them, if there's any use, like torches or... Well, check, check the bodies, there's nothing on them. Nothing of use, they've been completely stripped of valuables. Okay. So it's just the wagon, if you wanted to check that. Uh, can I check the wagon, please? Yeah, of course you can. Perception, please. That would be 15 plus my perception, 20. Nothing, but it looks like it's been really conveniently placed. Like, this looks like the most convenient upturned cart ever. Like, it's obviously taken a few people to lift it. It's been propped up nicely with some logs. It's This is, this is the perfect campsite in a very open area. It's a trap. <laughs> uh, looking yeah. around the woods nearby... Do I notice anything? Yeah, defensive defensive positions. Ad, <laughs> <laughs> you can't see anything, right? But we set but we have set fire that we set we have set the campfire up. So if we leave, people will be drawn to the campfire and not us. Good point. Shall we get going? Yeah, I don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is not good. Let's let's go. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Grab our, let's grab our, let's grab our stuff in there. Let's go. <laughs> okay, you guys wander out into the blizzard. As you begin to walk for a few hours, you can't see anything really around. It's like thick rain. It's the snow is that thick. It's covering your tracks quite quickly. Um, but you hear a horn. Um, behind you after after you've left about 10 minutes later like a big sort of war like a <laughs> just behind just where you were mm. let's mm. keep going guys let's keep going <laughs> keep going yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, so keep... you continue down this road until you find yourselves at the bridge. Can I get other uh, more perceptions, please? Okay, okay. Oh, oh, one shit. day I might remember what my perception is. I think it's for eleven. Uh, it's for... My perception. Nineteen. Eighteen. Cool. I got. So you guys are nearly at the um, the bridge, and you all see that there's a body up ahead, right near the crossing of the bridge. I'll just quickly um, move you on to this next page. I didn't put a marker in for this body. It's easy enough to do, though. So there is someone on the floor, and Ad, it's quite clear that this person's twitching. This person is is alive. Did he now, looking at this, is... would I think that this might look like bait? He's big boy. He's he's going to have to be. Uh, okay, I'll put it like that. It's, he looks a bit <laughs> weird, but that's probably the right size he's going to be. He's just at the mouth of the bridge. And you notice that there's a couple of arrows in his shoulder. Oh, no. Oh, is this from the people that are behind us now? Can, can you guys do a perception? It's the same, it's the same yeah. perception from before. That's how you're able to see the guy. Um, so he is, he is twitching, and you hear gurgling, and you just hear... Oh. Uh... Well, Shall we, um, shall we set up a defensive per perimeter? Add me at uh, Giles at uh, fucking hell. All <laughs> sorry. <laughs> if we set up like a perimeter, like, like we get up here and one of us gets Danny and Giles goes and checks on him. Actually, that might be a bad idea. <laughs> oh, you go and check on him. <laughs> I'll go check on him. It's fine as I'm looking through my spells. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, would you like me to go check on him, make sure it's all right? Although it could be a trap, but it's probably best can to I, your can, name. Can, can, can we see the opposite side of the bank from here? There's a thick tree line, a very thick tree line. See, um, looking at the body, could I tell which direction the arrow hit him from? Or yeah, that's you could actually. Um, you think possibly direction of the bridge. Oh, from the bridge? Yeah, from the other side of the bridge. Oh, okay, so not the guys behind us then. No. I mean... I'm not going near that body yet. <laughs> one, one moment, I just want to check something. I need my measuring tool here. All right, which one is? It's been a while. Is it this one? Yeah, so... Can you... So Lee, I can't can see you... there. I can... Yes? Can you clone yourself or anything like that? <laughs> I don't think I can clone myself, but there is... I can detect things like evil or good, but I believe the distance. I'm just is thinking if you could foot. make a, a pretend one of us to walk over that bridge. Um, Ooh, watch out! Ooh. I oh, don't, don't why think don't you I can yet? Oh. Can you create yourself? Can you summon a animal of some sort to go and drag the body towards us? He's gonna sh absolutely shit himself, do really, um, but... I mean, I can summon monsters. I don't know if I can get them to drag anything. I can certainly get them to attack stuff. Uh, Paris? Yeah, yeah, they, they do whatever you say. Okay, so can I summon... Uh, I need a, a big monster for this, don't I? Um, I don't think a dolphin's going to be any good here. <laughs> um, <laughs> what about... What are you using? You have quite a few summoning spells. Are you using your level 2 summoning spell? All right. The so level two oh, is got summon monster two. The difference is it just how long they last, or is it strength? And the different type of monsters that you can summon. So summon, uh, summon monster first level. You can get something like a big rat, a dog, an eagle, a dolphin, a big beetle, a poisonous frog, a pony, or a, a, a snake. Second, the second level version, um, you can have a giant ant. Uh, you can have a, a small elemental creature. You can have a giant centipede, and they're really big. 
Um, you can have a giant spider, a giant frog. You can have a horse, a hyena, or a wolf. Wow. I mean, there's loads of there's loads of ones that you can. Um... <laughs> there's an octopus. There's a squid. There's. A... <laughs> I mean, there's a couple there that come to mind. One's a horse. They're they're very good at. Uh... Well, obviously, if we can get yeah. on the back of it. Can, can but, you do uh, anything that's like human or you know? No, I don't think so. What about using the wolf or something? Or the giant, the giant ant? ant. Ants, ants are good and they can carry a lot. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Giant ant. I yeah. think I'll summon a giant ant, but I know it's going to take me at least one turn to do that, isn't it? From what I remember. So the giant ant is a medium sized creature, so it's as big as a man. Um. Oof. It's the size of it's size of a pony, and it's got really large mandibles, and it's relatively, you know, it's it's you know, it's a big a, a big ant. Yeah. So, so yeah, I'd like to summon a giant ant. Excellent. So you summon this giant ant, and I will see if I can find um, quickly a giant ant um, <laughs> creature, a token. I probably can. Maybe I can do like a centipede thing. Giant ants level one, is it? No, it's level two, isn't it? Yeah, it's your level two um, yeah. spell. Take myself some cards, I think. These uh, spells are. Quite yeah, quite they're, they're quite complicated. Um, this is going to be as good as it is. It's not, not an ant. It's, um, <laughs> it's a bug. <laughs> it's uh, it's some sort of bug. It's a wormy thing. Uh, it looks like the type of thing you'd put next to your door. To stop the draft. Yeah. Draft excluder. It does look like a, a wormy type of draft yeah. excluder. Um, so the ant sidles on up, <clears throat> and as it gets there, you see immediately a pouring of arrows come out and. Um, Six arrows fly, four hit it. Mm. Might be best not to go that way, guys. Might um, be. Did you guys see where the arrows came from? Yep, other side of the bridge. The creature takes 16 damage and disappears. Arrows are left in its wake. Well, better than yeah, that. We're definitely not, not uh, walking down to that geezer, are we? Yep. Uh, a horn from the other side blows quite loudly, and then again you hear from behind you another, another horn, really quite far away, just a tiny little sound you hear. You hear a in response. That's like some going, there's somebody on our bridge. Fuck. <laughs> um, yeah. What, what, can we make our way further down this river or, or pit or... Yeah, so it, it, it looks down and up, but actually these are east and west. So if you continue east to basically, um, if you can see where I'm snapping, yeah. Um, if you go that way, you can actually head to the lodge. Ah, let's. Oh, so oh, okay. Who owns this lodge? <laughs> I'm, I'm curious as to who these guys are. I mean. If we can, we can. I can we. If if this way is down to the lodge, hmm. Um, can we and Ad use? Can we like head down just towards the tree line without being spotted? Can we use our sneak? Well, I can and use. We... Um, I've got favoured terrain, and if I choose not to be tracked, I can't be on my not... favoured terrain. Not tracked, but they'd still be able to see you coming, won't they? If if you desire, yeah, they could see me coming. But if you desire, you leave no trail in this train and cannot be tracked. Mm. <clears throat> so oh. we'd still have to approach stealthily, wouldn't we? But I mean, what I'm thinking is not actually approaching them. I'm thinking of actually kind of like heading just within the tree line here, so that we can stay out of view. But hopefully, we might be able. To Oh, you know, we can still head towards the lodge, but I'm just thinking, because instead of us travelling across there, I just want to see who we're dealing with over here, how many there are and things. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Curious. Because otherwise, because currently, by the sounds of it, we've got two war parties um, that are coming this way. We're so we either have bang. 
the middle. Mm. We're, yeah, we're right in the middle of the jaws. Yeah, I so, think we should definitely head towards this lodge then. Yeah, but what I was thinking was, can we get here to see what kind of people were who could potentially be following us? Like we you... might be able to spot see if there are animals or bandits or... Sorry, carry on, Lee. I was going to say, do you want to go there and have a look? We'll wait here for you. <laughs> Roll a high stealth there, Dave. <laughs> I'll get, if if you go in, I'll get a stealth off you, Dave. God. What, what, what's your stealth like, Dave? So, like, hang on. Stealth is nine. Oh, mine's 11. <laughs> I'll let you go. Oh, you, if you go off, you go <laughs> Do you not remember what my stuff is? Are you like basically my... dragging a load of tin cans behind you everywhere you go? <laughs> yeah, he is. <laughs> Minus He's one. like a just married vehicle, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, well, I can as as long as uh, yeah. No point us all getting arrows in this, isn't it? You might as well just go. Yeah, I know, but if we don't know who we're fighting, we don't know how to prepare for them. Like, if it's elementals or something like that, we could do with knowing what kind of things we could fight them with. Do you know what I mean? I don't think if... I don't think... Would elementals use bows yeah. and arrows? Uh, that would be something that you would need a knowledge outsider's check for. Oh, not got that one. No one of you have that. Okay. Okay, let's just go to the <laughs> I just leave it. I just like, yeah, we're not going that way. Let's go this way. <laughs> Come on then. Um, let, yeah, let's head, head to the lodge. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, can I get um, fortitude saves off everyone? I don't know what my fortitude is. That's Eighteen. Plus... That's that's plus four again for me. Is it? Yes, it is. Uh, Twenty-two then. Yeah. 14 Stay for it. me. 14. Uh, Lee, take 1d6. Non-lethal cold damage, please. Matt is failing. Oh, 22. My brain just failed then. <laughs> Three. Fine with 22. Three. So, yeah, keep a record of your uh, non-lethal <laughs> damage. If you get warm again, it erases at the end of the day. If you've so had draft a sleep. up that robe, you're getting gels. That's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> so you continue back through the blizzard to head up um, to the place where this lodge has been identified it doesn't take long, it takes about 40 minutes, the blizzard gets worse and worse and worse and just as you feel like you know, the cold's really getting through and, and, and you, you're probably thinking that, that things are getting quite dire, you come across this lodge he says it not revealed <laughs> Go. Sorry, just quickly pasting these tokens. Reveal. Can I just say, Paris, that you're an ultra rare dungeon master? <laughs> Why am I an ultra rare dungeon master? <laughs> no reason. Oh. <laughs> right, hiding that. Uh, can you guys see that? Uh, oh, this is a bit. Yeah, the outside. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. you guys see the lodge in front of you. It was a little <laughs> off the way, and in fact, if you hadn't had the map and, and you didn't know it was there, you would have long turned back because it's been getting steeper and steeper and steeper on the cliffs, and the blizzard's been getting thicker and thicker. Um, but your determination has paid off, and you see the front of this lodge. Now, there's windows. Um, the shutters are open, um, but there's wooden bars blocking the the inside there's clearly no light emanating from this place and the blizzard's getting really really thick and there's a very large um door at the front looks very thick and for well fortified there's no sign of like fire smoke or anything nope nothing no, no leap fires you knock on the door <laughs> yeah oh god <laughs> Not everyone's going to be like, oh, people to kill. You know, it might be <laughs> friendly. You never know. We move forward here. 
So the door is here. Oh, okay. We just walked into a wall. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the door. And this is the wall. It's like very good, well made this is, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's that's the porch. You sort of huddle under the porch. It's providing you some measure of shelter from the, the blizzard that's getting worse as, as things go on. But there's a very large door. Who knocks? <laughs> I'll knock. I'll knock on. I'll You'll knock. be the one who knocks. We'll, 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 both knock on. we'll both knock on. Yeah. Just don't touch me. <laughs> so, so banging on the door at the same time, desperately, you, you know, bang, bang, bang on the door, and you don't hear anything on the other side. You notice as you're banging on the door, uh, a, a lock jingles, and you see a very large padlock at the front of uh, of, of the door, locking it from the outside. Okay. Can I? Uh, can I? Does anyone got any swing at it with an axe? Locking it from the outside. Yeah. yeah. Oh no! There's going to be something in this that we don't want to fight, isn't there? No, no dungeon master. <laughs> you can't anticipate me. <laughs> what, uh, <laughs> while they're doing, while they're doing that, I'll just keep a, a, an eye out back down this hill. Yeah. That we came up. I'll you break. Can, you I'll, can barely I'll see go. 15 feet in front of you, Ad. It, 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 you can okay. see shapes in the distance, but yeah. the blizzard's getting really exceptionally thick. I mean, we're going in here because I'm taking non lethal damage from the cold here, so we're going in. Uh, mm. Get an axe cool. to it, Dave. All right, Janice. Go for it. A, a hint, Dave. Your your character has subtler ways in unlocking doors, being say. a, a rogue and all. <laughs> but you know, feel free to axe it. This is this is your one and only hint. I mean, you can use the axe. It's up to you. Can you lockpick, Dave? Where is a rogue? I'm jealous. Do I have, have lockpick abilities? <clears throat> yes, yeah. you do. Yes, you do. Okay, you, can. Cool. Well, you, you, yeah. you even have thieves' tools in your inventory, Dave. So you you, you have the the lock picks and Dave. <laughs> Someone wasn't paying attention in character creation. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Rogue sneak, pick locks, disable traps. I use my thieves' tools that I knew I had all right from the start. If to, if you want to use... <laughs> let's face it, Angelus loves an axe. Mm. I do. I like cutting things and breaking things with an axe. So you unravel use... your thieves' tools, and there's a series of lock picks, screwdrivers, um, a small hand drill, um, really delicate equipment that you've acquired over <laughs> the years for the explicit purpose of setting traps, disabling traps, and and breaking into locks. Um, can I get a D twenty in a disabled device, please? Is it me? I'm just currently having flashbacks of all these other traps that we've encountered. <laughs> You've disabled traps before. <laughs> Have I really? <laughs> yeah, you, you, I think you disabled one in the crypt. I don't remember. Can I just step back? <laughs> yeah. I Charles definitely... Is <laughs> I've definitely like, tripped traps before now. Um, okay. That's a... 15 I rolled. I'm rolling really, really well tonight. Um, where's my disabled device? Is 10 for you, Dave? Oh, right. So for 25, then. So as smooth as silk, the lock pops open. Nice. Super easy. Easiest lock you've picked ever in your life. Um, oh. And you feel the door as, as you take the bolt off, the door is, is loose and it creaks in the wind. Oh, I'm good, aren't I? <laughs> totally use this skill loads of times. Yeah, so let's, let's um let's let's get inside, guys. We're, we're going in. Yeah, go, gotta go in. Um can we see inside this building? Yeah, of course you can. So as you walk through the door, um you sort of have limited light because the sh the shutters. Elves you can see a little bit more. Can I light myself up? Yeah, of course you can. So if you use light, you'll have very good vision of everything inside. Okay. So as you light up, you see the entirety of the room. And it looks like just a pub, a lodge, a tavern. 
There's a few chests and barrels scattered around. There's tables. There's places to drink. There's mugs that are empty on tables. Um, can I get a perception from everyone? Yeah. Yeah. 20. Oh, we're really good tonight. 21. 21. What'd you get, Lee? I got nine, but I don't know. What, what is it? Plus four. So 13. Yeah. So 13, so you think this looks quite cosy, Lee, and you immediately see the fireplace in front of you. There's already coal and wood stacked to the side, um, and there's there's even stuff to light the fire. So straight away you see that. Um, Dave and Ad, you have a look on the tables, and you see that on one table there's a series of tools laid out. So on one there's a knife, um, there's like a, um, like a tiny little um, wood drill, there's a, a mallet, and you see a um, basically it, it, it's it's how do I describe it? It's like a wooden board um, that that's got some sawdust on. Uh, the other table has ink, quills, and a couple of pieces of paper on. One being a map. Cool. That's a wooden map. Do we recognise the area on the map? So if you go over to the map, it is a map of caves. Which table is it on? Yeah. It's on this um this table. Got that awful look. Oh. <laughs> You're inside me. Um <laughs> <laughs> is there anything that says treasure on this map <laughs> there's nothing on it that says treasure but there is a map of these caves and a little note next to it and the note basically just says um i've looked at exploring these caves um i've noticed that the rivers are clearly linked um i'm tired of taking that old bridge tomorrow i'm gonna go out and i'm gonna go through the caves and see if i can hitch a fun ride um to scrabbard Okay, so this will take us across to that other side, avoiding the arrow blokes. Basically, that's Another that's that's what it. it's saying. Yeah, sound of that. And mm. that just oh. happens to be in here. <laughs> happens to be in here. Hmm. It's a game. Is it, is, is, did this belong to the guy on the bridge by any chance, with an arrow in his back? <laughs> <laughs> As you pick Sick up that map. That bridge. You notice that there's other maps of the areas underneath, and they have things like um, patrolling routes for the rangers. It's got a list of names. You see Jaw's name on there. You see the other names of the rangers, and you see um, someone has put a red cross next to each of them. Um, and in fact, you notice that all names are crossed off but one on the list. So and the mm. Jaw was wasn't he a good guy? Yeah. 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 And so whoever this map belongs to was out to kill them all. Ooh, oh, well, I imagine with the last time we were there, everyone, somebody came in and stormed the, the owls, didn't they, and killed everyone. So yeah. They, like, they, are these like this, there's this a map of stragglers that they didn't quite kill in the, in the in the, the tavern that we were in. Like, you know, is this a map of people who they've presumed have escaped and the they've located where they are? Hmm. So, sorry. so I thought that might have been the, whatever the devastation was carving the runes in people's heads. Well, it could be. Um, I don't like. I don't like. What's I don't that? like DM doing that. <laughs> no, <laughs> supposed to see that yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Roll me perception, please. Oh, God. oh for fuck's sake! <laughs> Watches are incoming, boys. <laughs> Twenty-two. I got a roll in actual eight. So twenty-five. Ad, so Adam and, and Dave, you immediately turn round and you see uh, an, a, a man in the doorway. It's difficult to tell because he's so wrapped up in furs, um, but he's got a bow in his hand and he's looking at you all quite nervously. What are you? What are you doing in here? I thought I locked that door. Um. Does this map belong to you? I'll hold out the map with the crosses of the people on it. He nods. He says, as I've 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 been finding my my brother's bodies everywhere. They're they're all dead. I'm the only one left. 
we oh well this isn't a, this isn't an assassination list then this is a he he shakes his head can i get a sense motive from you oh no from me as or all of us from from all of you anyone who has a sense motive uh 19 do i get any bonus cuz i'm kind of against humans <laughs> <laughs> oh, 14. 14. Lee, did you get any sense motive? I'm just seeing another guy. I've got one. I'm just going to roll it. Cool. Six. Yeah. Uh, Lee, you're not sure whether to believe him. Adam Dave is, is very plausible. Like it's, you know, he, he doesn't seem like he's lying, but Lee, you detect a bit of dishonesty. Hmm. So, I'm going to go over to these guys first of all. I'm just going to go over here and say, um, I'm going to face this guy that's at the door and just say, we came in here because there's a, you know, it's getting very cold outside, we need to keep it warm. That's what we're doing here. Uh, and I'm just going to nudge Dave and go, don't believe him. <laughs> Now, Dave and Ad, you're pretty confident that he's telling the the truth. But Lee, you're pretty confident that that he's 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 not, or you're not entirely sure. You actually, you're a bit more on the fence, but you don't think he's telling the truth. Um, it, in the meantime, um, this guy shuts the door behind him and goes over to the fire and lights it. Okay, so he's not trying to kill us straight away then. Mm -hmm. So, um. So, um, who are you? What's your name? Who are your brothers? He says, my name's Lithuin, and he pulls back his head, and you see um, large elf ears. Okay. Intriguing. He says, I'm, I'm one of the uh, rangers of Iswaya. We look after and maintain the land surrounding Thryn. Or we used to. There's none of us left. Okay. Um, so why are these people crossed out on this map? Because I've been searching for them to check whether they were alive or dead. Someone started hunting us about a month ago. Men, peaked caps, black, um, had dogs. They 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 chase some of our scouts. We didn't realize that they were hunting us down. Um, I th but think we, we may found have... that he, he stops to listen. I think we may have inadvertently dealt with that problem for you. Was that he, your mate, Dave? He looks My at you mate. and raises his eyebrows. Captain William Pike, I exclaimed to him. Yeah. He, shake, bells. he shakes his head. He says, I, I know no names, but... Um, he turns round and he marches like straight past you all and he goes over to one of the barrels here, opens it, turns back round and you see um, a peaked tricorn hat in black and he says, I took this off one of the bodies and he chucks it at you and it lands in front of you and it's just covered in blood. He says, this man killed one of my brothers. Jumping in that barrel, I was like, what's he going to come out of there now? <laughs> Molotov cocktail. <laughs> <laughs> Grenade. <all>. Machine gun. <laughs> okay, so so does that hat look like the same hat of the Wayne Pike and that yeah. people we killed? From what you remember, I it's similar it. enough. Yeah. Hmm. So they're hunting you. Why? I, I ask him a question. Uh, why are you marking down where they've been killed? To know how many's left. How many are there? He points to the the map and he says, Count, there were there were thirty seven of us. All in lodges like this. Now there's just me. So Jaw's dead. He nods. Okay. He says in the ruins at Thryn. Oh where we came from. Hmm. We he said there. the saw it all. He, he he fell. Um, looks like some sort of large creature. Not entirely sure what yet, but 
there's there's strange creatures abroad in these lands. I saw a wog the other day. Okay. Um, we're headed down to find a brother's Loxon. He nods. He says the chieftains there. down south. That's it, yeah. Mm. What's your plan of action now? All of your brothers are dead. <laughs> he says, I've been a ranger as, as long as I can remember. My people, we lived in these lands. We settled these lands as elves, but... Um, we had a disagreement with the humans and a disagreement with the goddess Swaya, and she took from us these lands and she gifted Norval to the humans. We'd gone astray. And for this, I have been a ranger to appease the goddess, to sway her wrath against me. I clearly have failed as, as things have gone terribly wrong. But I shall stay here and I will continue the penance for myself and my people. I will look after these lands as best as I can, hunt the dangerous animals, and hopefully by the time there is next to Jarl elected, these lands will be tame. Okay. Um, so besides wogs, what other beasts do you know of around this land? Ones that are strange to this place or yes. ones that are common strange to this place i've been hearing sightings of bugbears strange creatures they don't normally work together but apparently there have been several sightings of bugbears groups of them very unusual and then that's when rangers started disappearing apparently we someone saw a large group i, I came across a note on someone's body a message that there was a large host of, of bugbears heading north. That right. must have been what attacked them at Thryn. One wasn't just constantly throwing up on itself, was it? <laughs> no, he, he he shakes his head. He that says, was a... I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if, if that's, a that's a creature you're thinking of. Bugbears are... Yeah. Bugbears are, are about seven foot tall to eight foot tall with a stoop and he begins to describe them they're like a large goblinoid creature hair mean i wouldn't it, want to uh, fight one mud giant or something mud troll mud do you Not say this creature. in the conversation yeah yeah i'm trying to yeah what was it mud um... he says you're thinking of a thorn That's... yes oh. yes there's there's thorns oh. in this area miserable creatures lonesome they are native though we have all sorts of giants here, thorns, ogres, no ice giants, not at this no. time of year. Is this blizzard usual? He shakes his head. He says it's it's the start of spring. There, there, there shouldn't be a blizzard like this. So there could be a nice giant on the, from the table. He's from the east. He's <laughs> from the east, yeah, yeah. He cocks his head and he thinks and he says, I think it's an omen. A massacre and a blizzard. The gods are speaking to us. Do you think gods or just something uh, evil? He says there are evil gods. Gods of undeath. Gods of madness. What would you put your money on? Does he think... being? Pardon? What would you put your money on this god being? He shakes his head. He says, I think it's his way as wrath. He says, I doubt the likes of um, Sataris and Nex would, would trifle themselves with this weather. Their ways are more insidious. Um, oh, <laughs> <Opinions>? Did, no, <laughs> that was, any of us had a copy of one of them symbols? Oh shit! We should have drawn it. Yeah. Um, well, can I just say to him, uh, have you seen the strange symbols that have been carved into people's heads? He he cocks his head again and shakes it. No. He says, "I've seen no symbols. 
only the the butchery of men. Would I be able to draw it from memory for him? Can I get an intelligence check, please? Oh, oh 20. What is my thing? <laughs> you can remember the first symbol. What's my... Uh, which I will... Two, draw so 22, you. that'll be then, yeah. So all you can remember is... Give a second, I'm just going to draw it freehand. must remember to the future draw stuff down <laughs> you may want to make a note of it now because you may not remember it later um that's the symbol you remember ad that's oh, all yes. you can remember from the writing that was um so I'm missing all, all a bit to the left then <laughs> yeah okay does, does this sit part of a symbol look familiar to you he shakes his head Oh, get out. <laughs> now I see as a cat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. He um <laughs> <laughs> He says I know not of of such simple uh, symbols. I'm a I'm a simple ranger. I've just lived longer than most. Okay. I'll just explain to him then that all the people we saw masked just below in a camp all had this symbol carved into their heads he looks shocked <clears throat> he says um, what what manner of what manner of creature would do this maybe a bugbear maybe a something that worships something evil so a bugbear is intelligent enough then to do he this kind of thing he okay. knows he says bugbears oh. are Incredibly wily creatures. As I say, they don't normally work in groups, but groups of them were sighted. Um, they lay vicious, evil traps. They like to torment their their foes. Do you uh, think, as, as they don't normally travel in packs, do you think they could be being corralled by somebody else for to work for him or her? It would take a significant force to get bugbears to work together. Well, it would be a reasonable assumption. With the weather and that, yeah, it's say, it could be happening. It could be a cleric. He nods. Uh, a cleric of sufficiently evil power. It could be a cleric uh, controlling other things, animals, people. Mm. He looks at you and cocks his head. He says, uh, "I, I feel you're making a hypothesis." Well, speculating. Elementary, dear Watson. <laughs> <laughs> Whilst you're um, making a hypothesis, my character is going to very quickly go for a pee in a corner. Mm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> as as you begin to take your um your your member out, he just um, turn your off, he, Dave. You don't need to move uh, it. Just turn it off. He points at a bucket. <laughs> Oh, okay. Can I go to the bucket then, please? Yeah. <laughs> you may uh, go to the bucket. Where's the bucket? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's by the fireplace. Okay, sad. I'll I'll head over to the bucket. I'll, mm. I'm, I'll be. Uh, right. You may also go in real life, Dave, if you need to. Excellent. Dave, thank you. Dave. Dave, before oh, I saw that, <laughs> I was gonna, I was, you could have just clicked on the. <laughs> <laughs> Hide the camera. Yeah. Uh, um. Is it safe to get this fire going? I'm just thinking of Giles. Uh, our friend is uh, not very good in the cold. Have we not got that fire going yet? He's he's already started the fire. He oh, says, started it. He says, "Worry not. We're we're close enough to the mountain. The trees are sufficiently thick. Um, this blizzard, no one's going to see the flame, the the, uh, the smoke." Okay. Nice. Do you have any food here? He he nods and he. Um, he goes back outside. Okay. And why he's outside, I just tell him I'm still not sure about this guy. Um, oof, just not so sure about him. Just keep your keep your wits about you. About yeah, him. he's not. not uh, you don't think he's telling us everything then? No. I could. I could use a spell <laughs> that 
means he can't lie around his, but I'm not sure what's worth doing yet. Unless he's just guarded because all of his brothers are dead. Essentially. That is he, an interesting food. He drags in a very large bird um, that's dead. It, it's got two arrows in it. Um, he's snapped off the the tips. He's been unable to pull it out. And he says, um, the, the geese in this region are extraordinarily large. It provide a meal for all of us. And he drags it to the table and begins taking his implements to it to pluck and do the thing he needs to do. No KFC oh. around here, then? Nope, no KFC. <laughs> it's all um, it's all manual. Um, is there anything we can help with? Do you mind if we, we stay here with you for the night? He nods. He says, that's acceptable, but um, I'd like you gone by the morrow. That's fine. We need to travel south, I think, was it? Yeah. Mm. He says, you've seen the map on the table. Yes, both maps, yeah. He, he says, you may, you may take the map of the caves. They're not far from here. Excellent. It's your best route if... Um, if if there's something wrong with the bridge, you said arrows were fired at you. Uh, a lot of arrows and mm. horns. Hunting horns. Sounded that way. Mm. He nods. He says uh, the horns were uh, apparently the sign of bugbears. They must be on the prowl. What that was? You think that was the bugbears' horns? He nods. He we says all. The- he says all the large, all the documents stated that the bugbears were using hunting horns to communicate and lay traps for people. Yeah, I was going to say, we came across a camp that looked far too convenient. He nods. He says, I imagine if you stayed there, you would uh, <coughs> you would not be here right now. Right. So, what time is it? It is probably about half to nearly three o'clock, um, but the blizzard is raging outside. It's not it's not quite terrible yet, but you you certainly would if you go outside, you'd start getting some exposure damage. So how's the, yeah, so basically you know. we're just gonna sit here and mm. do enough as we can do um, a couple of hours and eat. I'll say mm. to um, was his name Lethwin. Lithuin, yeah. Lithuin. Uh, would it be wise to bolster this door for the night? He says, I'm I'm unsure where the where the padlock's gone. It should be able to lock from the inside, but I I, I don't have the I must have I'm, I must have forgot to put it on. It's not like me. Oh just Angelus, do you have the padlock? I'll put the padlock. I'll, I'll um I could use this as like I got it. Hmm. He nods slowly at you. Pop it on the door, Angelus. Can I just I'll uh I'll go do this. Yeah. He sort of mutters to himself as he's plucking, he says, uh, perhaps I should invest in a, a better lock. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't be ashamed, Angelus is a master lock picker. He nods. He says, someone with the uh, skill of thieves isn't someone I anticipate wanting to uh, spend a night with. <laughs> it doesn't look like you have too much you'd want to steal, so I wouldn't worry. No, I'm the master of axes. <laughs> <laughs> he nods. He says, uh, we rangers are simple folk. We um, We live off the donation of resources from the villagers that are our patient, patrons, and the Yarls generally donate generously in terms of resources, materials, steel mainly. The rest, he points around the lodge, we, we make ourselves. Okay. Mm. We won't be stealing anything. We just need uh, a place to rest until this blizzard's uh, disappeared. 
Hmm. He nods. How's that chicken going? Or geese, <laughs> whatever it is. <laughs> he is like halfway through plucking and he just kind of gives you a bit of an icy stare. <laughs> it's the equivalent of, are we there yet? <laughs> um, Do you have anything while to I'm drink? Waiting. He points at a, another barrel and he says, I believe there's a couple of bottles of ale in there. You're you're welcome to help yourself. Thank you. Nice. While he I'm says, waiting for the food to cook, I'll uh, whip out the pack of playing cards that I had in my pack. Just oh, uh, nice. playing some form of patience, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm going to I'm going to go pray to next. I haven't prayed uh, for a while, so I'm just going to hop over here and quietly pray, saying, you know, sorry, next. I know I've not uh, killed anyone today, but I'm sure it won't be long. Don't you worry. And by the way, next, can you smell we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right next to the bucket. <laughs> so Lithuan <laughs> overhears your prayers, and he looks up. And he puts his knife down and he looks towards Ulf, the, the other elf in the room. And he says, um, your friend is a, a priest of Nex. He is, but he's not all the way over a bad side. You definitely want to keep him on your good side, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, uh, if you ever, if you ever offered to shake your hand... Don't. don't don't shake his hand. <laughs> he says um, the priests of Nex are evil. They were exiled in the south. Yeah, yeah. but this is the north, man. <laughs> <laughs> you will yeah, Charles, Charles is your average uh, Nex priest. Mm. He, he helped out. I don't know if you've heard of um, Sved. I can't remember what his last name was. Carl Sved Svedsa. Sved like Sved son, that. We uh, we helped him out on the way. Giles was very handy in that. He nods slowly. He says, "I know little of the the small time chieftains of of the backwater <laughs> villages." Cool. I'll have to tell Sved that next time I see him. <laughs> He's small time, Sved. Small time. <laughs> he asks, "Which village?" Hey. He says, which which villages, Sved, the chieftain of? Oh, God. Now you're asking. Oh, that, um, <laughs> that's an uh, excellent question that we all know. Of course we do. <laughs> it, 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 it. It's got a pub that looks like an upturned boat. <laughs> yeah. Up the, upturned boat town. Um, upturned boat town. <laughs> you know that place up, up north? He, from your your vague descriptions and your seemingly absent mindedness, he, he garners that uh, the village is indeed hailed. That's what he says. Uh, ah, so your your friend is a a chieftain of cattle. Oh, is that what he was? Oh, God. <laughs> He says, I um, I don't believe there's any more than a collection of small villages and farms. No wonder he had, didn't really have aspirations to be Jarl then. <laughs> <laughs> he says, um, have any of you seen one of the larger towns? Um, we went to, where was it we travelled to? <laughs> oh, I can't remember anything tonight. So your character has been to Svard, the capital. Ad. That's it. So you've been to uh, a, a very large, one of the larger cities, actually yeah. the largest city in the north. Um, Dave, you you hail from a small town, Hindle. So um, sadly, you've you've probably never seen a town. Uh, you you've probably never seen anything larger than a village or small fortified uh, settlement. Uh, Lee, I don't think you have either. You're a helt born and bred, aren't you? Mm. So yeah, you've you've probably not seen populations bigger than a hundred before. He says, um, Blard and Scrabad are, are large towns, sister towns. They are um they have three hundred men apiece in them. 
yes, uh, I was from somewhere called Pient. Hmm. He says Pient is a, a reasonably large village. I've I visited previously to trade. Good hunters. Yeah, not bad, not bad. Hmm. My father was one. He says your father, elf. No, he was human. Hmm. He says, and and the ears come from your mother. Then, yes, indeed. Hmm. He he nods solemnly. He says, uh, sometimes, sometimes elves mix elves. with with humans. Clearly. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> he, he says it in a slightly condescending way. Oh, okay. All right. Um, he he sort of looks at you with some pity, and he says, um, "Elf souls are are long lived, but uh, human bodies are frail. You won't live more than two hundred years, sadly." Oh, is that all? <laughs> that is. He I says, know. he says, our race have so much potential. So, how old are you yourself? He says, M- myself, I'm, uh, I'm three hundred and twelve. Wow, you're an old man. He says, I'm, I'm middle aged for an elf. Jeez, nice. <clears throat> Well, hopefully you'll make it another 300. <laughs> <laughs> he, he turns to you all and gives you quite a serious look, and he says, I worry about making it through the night. Th- that makes four of us. <laughs> <laughs> sure you'll be fine. Mm-hmm. He scowls at the priest of Nex. <laughs> 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 the cleric of the undeath amongst him. Um... And he he finishes up. Um, So he basically isn't really going to engage you with you that much more unless you've got questions to ask. He's going to slowly cook his meal, serve it up to you, give you, you know, relatively hearty portions. Um, He gives Dave the biggest portion and then you guys the next biggest portion and gives himself the smallest. And he says, um, humans, I, I, I hear humans require a lot of sustenance. This one seems to. Mm. <laughs> he, he, he nods and he says, I've given you a, a portion appropriate to your lineages. Sounds about right, yeah. And and he um, begins to eat his food quite delicately. Does Lee eat? He does, doesn't he? <laughs> oh, I, do. I, I, I definitely do eat. Um... I uh, wonder, could we potentially speed up time to the next day? Yeah, of course we can. Yeah. So it's not long before the the, the sun rises. Do you take it in turns to sleep? Do you keep someone watch? Or do you just all kind of doze in this nice locked? Well, we lodge? take... I, I, I insist that one of us stays awake. We, t- we take shifts three hours yeah. at a time. Hmm. Well, Lithuan yeah. doesn't seem to sleep massively long. He sleeps for about four hours and then is immediately up again. So um, I, I, I don't know how long a period you're having shifts for. I assume it's going to be like three hours up, then that person sleeps, then the next person gets up for three hours to all give yourself a reasonable time of, of sleep. Um, but he sleeps for about a shift and a half. And then he's up and then he's just pottering round and he gets out a map and he's doing things with that. And then he takes out a book and starts reading and he occasionally looks at the weather. Um, But that's all you really see him do. And then the sun rises and the blizzard dies down. That's some good news. Mm. Right. So um, does he have anything to eat for breakfast? There's remains of the pheasant still in a pot on the boil. It's dry, but it's it's food. Okay. I suggest we um, we eat some of that before we leave. Nice. Mm. And then uh, we can get moving. Mm. He turns to you before you leave and he says, um, 
I must warn you, the uh, the caves are a dangerous place. Why? What have you seen there? He says rumours are, well, not just rumours, ogres tend to populate the area, but they're, they're lone creatures. You, you may come across a stray ogre, but um, I'm sure the three of you would be able to slay one. Yeah, we've taken on ogres before. We're fine. Any tips on taking down the ogre? Then say the jealous first. <laughs> Just yeah. null and void my standards. <laughs> he said they're fearsome in close range, strong creatures, incredibly strong, um, ugly and hateful. I suggest you take it down quickly, otherwise it can cause a lot of um, destruction. Okay, awesome. Hmm. Right, shall we get out of here? Marvellous. So you begin to make your way to the caves. So the map shows that the caves aren't far at all, and in fact, you can already see the gorge in front of you and the, the side of it. Um, you can see the small rocky path that would take you to the caves. The snow's thick on the ground, you can't see any tracks, and every step you take makes a nice, fresh footprint. Oh no. Oh, no. Apart from ads, of course, if he chooses not to leave a Oh a yeah, track. I, I think I'll do that. Yeah. Mm. <clears throat> you could travel in a straight line to make it seem like there's only one person. Like, like the sand people. <laughs> the sand people, yes. <laughs> 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 So yeah, so as you um, as you do that, you you begin to cross the gorge and you see a cave entrance in front of you that was marked very clearly on the map. What would you like to do? Oh, we'll go in. Wonderful. Um, well, yeah, we, well, I would like to stealthily go in the cave. Yeah. We're going in anyway, let's face it. We know we're going in there. Yeah, I don't want to go in noisily if I don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they're going to hear me. That's uh, true. That's, this is true. <laughs> yeah, Giles, you wait here for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> so as you enter, um, are you entering stealthily then, just Adam and Dave? Yes, please. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Um, so I will like a stealth check from both of you, please. 21. <laughs> yep. And um, Dave? Uh, is, I'm all in the same car. Uh, stealth. Yes, please. No. Oh, did really well. Um, I know, maths is failing me. Simple nine. <laughs> <laughs> What was that? 16. <laughs> 16. <laughs> Love it. I don't know. So, Adam Day, <laughs> you enter the cave quietly, and you see oh, in the corner, huddling and shivering, the, uh, one of the ugliest giant creatures you've seen in, in your life. It's holding a ripped up tree in its hand, and it's just like shivering, just like, brr, brr, just you know, continually rubbing its arms. Its face is scarred, twisted, and horrible, and its body looks mutated with lumps, and um, it's just quite a gross creature. Right. Um, Could be friendly, but I'm outside still. You are still outside. Is there any way around it? The cave is quite wide. You would like this is is a very large entrance, like it's a part of the gorge that stoops down from the cliffside. So you can see the sort of the little warren of caves behind. But at the moment, this is an area that's sheltered. Um, but as you can see, it's very wide. So if you can get, you know, you could sort of sneak round him within thirty feet. So you should be able to get past him if you. Sneaking, he doesn't hear you. If, if, if indeed. Um, 
Shall I try first to sneak around him? Angelus. Yeah, what well, I'll yeah. Do you you uh, you whispering this to each other because you you know Yeah. I'm just thinking that that if I go first, if he does get spooked, at least somebody will be flanking him. Mm. Mm. <clears throat> yeah, I do you as you talk to each other, you see the ogre sort of just like look around like did I did I hear something? And as you stop talking, he sort of goes back to shivering. Um just yeah, yeah, there's no such thing as a friendly ogre, is there? We could try it, so we can ask So we haven't actually tried talking to anything yet of really <laughs> no, we just uh, attacked him. <laughs> I think... As you continue talking, he stops shivering and roars and looks around. And as you quieten down, he goes back to shivering. Um... So what about, like what about if we... Can we pretend to be his like inner voices? Just see what we can do with that. <laughs> Pretty sure that I have a spell. Unfortunately, I'm outside that allows me to understand any animal. <laughs> what does of course, no ogre speak? Of now, that we, now that we finally expelled you from the group for this bit, <laughs> I know, right? I'm pretty sure I do. I, I'll just try to find it. I'm, I'm sure I have. Dad, can I get a knowledge check from you regarding yeah. ogres? I will uh, take a. They're all the same. I'll, anyway. Yeah, I'll, I'll take a knowledge nature, um, but again plus two because of the book that you yeah, plus two on top of that because of the book you've been reading on ogres and oh, nice. trolls and things. Uh, so roll the sixteen. So that's what twenty four is that? Yeah. Plus plus what did you say? Plus four. So your knowledge nature, which is eight, eight plus an extra two. So 28 then, yeah. Oh, yeah no, so sorry, 26. 26. Um, so you know that they speak <laughs> giant. Okay. They're intelligent speak. enough to, but they are not the brightest of creatures. They're probably the most more stupid of the giants. <laughs> so I speak giant then. Mm. Um, can I just listen in on him, see whether he's just chuntering to himself or anything? He's just shivering. He's just, just cold. Shivering. Yeah. Why got ask her ask her if it's okay, Ad? <laughs> that could be lethal, couldn't it? <laughs> oh, homie. <laughs> um would would I know if they liked anything in particular? Like Yeah, you God. know they like violence, they <laughs> love eating the crispy skin of humans. Okay. Um they're particularly cruel creatures. Um, but stupid and simple. They rip up trees and throw them at people. Um, they're 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 rel- relatively dangerous. Um, um, so where he is, is it hmm. just is it just one way through where he is? Um, so think of it more like a disc than a square, right? And basically, yes. So you have to go down into the gorge in order to get to the caves past him. So he's plucked himself right in the... In the middle of this disc. Basically, yeah. Okay. So I was just toying with where I could use a whistling arrow to go past him and distract him. Like, well... I don't think we can reason, re- reason with him, Dave. Or Giles. I'm outside. Are you sure? Because, I mean, the guy... He, he likes to just eat oh. human flesh and throw things, and he's generally stupid. Well, I was thinking this because the dude's cold. Okay, well, like... I'll, I'll hang back here while you go and take him a fur coat. Can I come into the cave, please? Yeah, of course <laughs> you can. Are you trying to be stealthy? Oh, God. Will it hear me if I come into the cave right now? If you're not trying yeah, to be stealthy, it may. <sighs> God damn it. I really want to tell one of these to put a bow in it, but if I come in to serve it. Um, 
but I don't know what's going on until you uh so lee your character has been outside for a good like let's say 120 seconds um i'm gonna come in i'm gonna yeah. vote, i'm gonna vote for stealth yeah marvelous is that's five six minus one yep <laughs> cool i'm gonna roll a perception yep 17 oh, crap. it roars and turns and sees you hi guys <laughs> <laughs> oh, we said stay outside Giles. <laughs> you didn't come back and tell anything did you <laughs> <laughs> as you all begin to sort of talk to each other and break down as this thing's roaring at you, it suddenly realizes two other creatures there. It brightens up with a big grin on its face. It takes the log in its hand and it begins <laughs> to charge. Can I get initiatives from you all? Oh, God. Uh... <laughs> I'm too glad I came in. <laughs> so you took too long thinking about it. Eleven. Where's my initiative? <laughs> Um, oh, yeah, an initiative. I got 27. Please. That was fine. What you get, Lee? Uh, seven. <laughs> Always lastly, in the order of things. Always first, Dave. <laughs> oh, God. Are you first, Dave. What are you going to do? This thing's about to charge at it. Yep, it's just sort of getting up off its ass, and it's um, sort of hunching on all fours. It's beating its log against the floor, and it's gritting its teeth. And the smell is just horrific from this creature. Excellent. Um, well, uh, all kind of any means of stealth is gone. Um do I have any special skills I can use? Can I use... Uh... When you attack before anyone else, you still apply your sneak attack damage. That's why it's advantageous that you go first, Dave. Ah, um, that, I knew there was something. Because you catch him flat-footed. Excellent. Um, I'm going to um, launch an axe at him. I love the way he's got bows and arrows, but he launches an axe. Yeah, I can reach it, can't I? I think. It's a long I way. Know. Long way, seventy-five foot, yeah. an axe. So it's on your character sheet the penalty that you would have to take for seventy-five foot. So you lose. <laughs> so so from fifth, if he was fifty feet away, it'd be minus three to hit. So sixty, seventy. So minus f- so minus five minus three, so that's two. Let's um let's go with this sense that I pick my axe up out of its holster, realize it's a bad idea, and then on yeah. take my bow out. Okay, <laughs> cool. It would be a minus. I think it'd be a minus five based on the calculations. It basically doesn't take you as far as as seventy five feet for a throwing axe. Right. Cool. I'm you gonna... take your bow out. Yeah. Let's shoot it with a bow. <laughs> um, it's a plus four to hit him with your bow. Oh, nice. Plus four. Nice. Okay. Yep. Really hard uh, to think about what I can do to this creature. Let's go, uh, let's go ahead and roll for to shoot it in the face with a bow and arrow. Okay, cool. I roll 20. Ooh, I shit nice. you not. I shit nice. you not. So 1d6 for your masterwork bow, and can I get another d6 for your sneak attack, please? Ooh, come on. So can I, can I get <gasps> to prove that I'm Josh? <laughs> can I get the? I don't. Oh, sorry, it's two d six points of extra damage, and you cause them to bleed. So, sorry, it's three d six. Three d sixes. Yeah. Okay. In total, and first one's a six. Yep. Nice. Okay. Uh, yeah. Meh, six. And uh, second one is a two. Yep. And the last one is a four. So that's 12 damage in total. Gnarly. And I'm going to have a quick look at the rules of bleeding because the. 
This attack causes the target to take two additional points of damage each round. Bleeding can be stopped by a DC 15 heal check or the application of any effect that heals point damage. This does not stack with itself. Right? So okay. next round, he'll take an additional two bleeding damage as well. Oh, excellent. Sorry, I just got totally distracted by Barney. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so this thing gets an arrow in its neck and you see the blood begin to gush from the wound as it yells. That's good. We like Add, it's your turn. We like Happy pain. day. Um, <clears throat> we're, we're in a cavern bit at the moment, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. If I look up at the ceiling, is there anything like, could I see any like loose rock being able to dislodge it with an arrow or anything? Or is that just there's, not practical? Um, <clears throat> there's some quite thick stalag tights are the ones that hang from the ceiling or stalag tights down. Whichever they are. Yeah, tights there's, down. There's, a, there's a couple of the ones that are, um, are face down. They're really thick. Um, but yeah, there's a couple. There's a couple of things up there. It's it's quite a wet cavern. This there's lots of gushing water. There's the odd drip drop from the ceiling. So yeah, there's a couple of them. Well, uh, if I can, I'll try and dislodge one of those that are above his head. Uh, with an arrow. Yeah, please. Yeah. Okay. Can I get a um, d20 to hit, please, um, for your normal longbow damage? Uh, 26. Yep, 26 is a hit. Um, can you do damage to the structure, please? So what is it, 1d8 for your longbow? Yeah, that's it, yeah. Uh, five. So your arrow go, chips off a corner, but it's just, it's really thick, This these pieces of rock okay. above him. Um, it's it, it wasn't that effective. You think you'd have to waste quite a few arrows in order to get something like that down. Um, at least if you were doing it by bow. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that is that. Um, it is the ogre's go. So the ogre is going to charge. So he's going to do a double movement. Forty uh, foot is his base. He can travel eighty. He's going to. Dash in. Just gonna kill. And he's gonna you. get right up in your grill ad. Oh, fuck. <laughs> um, no. And if he's double dashed, can he attack? Yes, he can. No. Just double checking if there's any feats that means he doesn't. No, it can attack. Uh, so he's gonna attack you with his big tree stump. Um, he's going to swing it round and 17 add what's your AC uh, my AC is 12 I was just looking if I had any other modifiers <laughs> no. uh, so I'm just quickly doing some math swim checks non-lethal damage no. Yeah. So, yeah, it hits. <laughs> okay. So, this tree comes down and cracks you square on the neck and the shoulder and the head, and you feel it jar and your head twists around and you feel your teeth grate together. It does 15 damage to you, Ad. Jesus. God. That's <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, a lot of damage. Where's my character? Am I being blind? Oh, sorry. I'll reveal you now. There you go. Okay. Um, uh, Lee, it's your turn. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to run to here. Hang on. Uh, I am going to give this guy some bleeding search. Cool. Ta da. Uh, run headlong into death. Well, you know, he kills me, <laughs> kills me, but uh, he's going to run at one of his necks, so it's probably going to be me, so, you know. So, bleeding touch, you need to make a melee touch attack, Lee, so you need to draw, roll a d20 plus um, plus one for you. Okay. 
one, so that's 19. 19. This thing is so easy to touch because it's absolutely massive. Like, there's just, you reach out and there's just, there's an arm, there's the side of his body. Really easy to do. Um, do you want to roll bleeding touch damage on him? That is D6, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, is that it? Two. Two? Yep, cool. Um, so he takes two damage. So at the end of the round, he takes his bleeding damage and the additional bleeding damage from the one round that you did, um, Lee. So for you, it's 1d6 of damage, point damage per round. So I'll, if you roll another d6 damage for me. Five. Yeah. Nice. And for you, Dave, do you want to roll another d6 for me for bleeding? Uh, yeah, d6. I roll six. Okay. Cool. So, sorry, what was yours, Lee? Five. Five and six. So that is um, 11. That is 20. Three damage he's taken. Uh, Dave, you'll go. Oh, um, well, I guess we're in. I can't really shoot an arrow at him, kind of. Well, I probably could. You might risk hitting out if you miss. You mean uh, me? Oh, what? sorry. Yeah, Lee, if you miss. Yeah. Okay. Go for it, Dave. <laughs> it's, it's fine. I'll take an arrow in the butt. Well. <laughs> Can I um can I dash like over here and then shoot at him? Yeah. Could take yeah. a melee step, yeah. Yeah, can I do that? Yeah, go for it. I'll I'll, drop, I'll dive down here and I'll take a shot at him with my bow and arrow. Nice. D twenty for me, please. D twenty. I roll fifteen. 15 is a miss, so it just bounces against his hard flesh. Add your Shit. turn. Okay. <clears throat> so, another question. Yes. I have ride skill. Yeah. Will that give me any advantage getting up on top of him? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I would say that that would be a... I, I would say it would possibly be a grapple. Right. So your grapple is plus three, so D20 plus three, and I'll, I'll say you can sort of try and climb him. I'll, I'll try that. Yeah. I'll probably be dead next round. <clears throat> so D20 plus three. Yep. Come on. 18. 18. 18. Let's have a quick look at this creature. Um, so what I'm after is his... Sit combat defense eighteen, you say? Yeah. You begin climbing the ogre. Yes. So am, am I up on his back? Oh. Yeah, you can you can get up on his back. That's not a problem. But that's all you can do this round. Get up on but, his back. Oh, don't that that that's an action then. That's an action. Oh, yeah. Oh, so it. you're you're up and on his back. You can move your character accordingly onto his back if you like. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll be up on his shoulders, yeah. holding his ears. <laughs> <laughs> Just pulling at them. <laughs> Mind you, how big is his head? Is it... <laughs> Pretty big. So an ogre is... Let's have a quick look. So it's a large creature. Um, I'm trying to have a look how much it weighs. It doesn't say. Uh, it's easily four times the size of a large human. It's pretty big. Just about reaches his then. Yeah. So you climb up onto it and, and get onto its back. Um, it's trying to grab at you, but it can't. It can't get you as you're you're, you're coming round as it's um, you know as it was trying to resist you climbing it. Um, it's it's go. Oh no. And rather than bothering with you, I'll just move your token onto the back of him. Rather than bothering you and swatting you off, he's gonna continue with his club in his hand. Um, and he's going to take a swipe at Giles. Um, so what's your um, AC, Lee? My AC is nine. Okay. Yep, he certainly hits you. He rolled a 15 there. 
four and five. That's nine plus seven. Sixteen oh damage, God. please, Lee. <laughs> oh dear. What's my? Uh, I think my my okay. HP is nineteen. How much say? Sixteen. Sixteen, please, Lee. Okay, cool. Make a note of that. I'm going to get this guy now. That's it. Just... Lee, it's your turn. Excellent. I want to do. So I take my 16 damage, the little git. Uh, where are you? The level 2 spell, which I had in my hand up to the point when he gave me that lovely damage. <laughs> what spell are you looking at using? It's some uh, inflict uh, moderate wounds. Oh, wonderful. That's a great spell. Yeah, it deserves it. I it's... did have. It's two dice, isn't it, I believe? I it's just 2d8 it. plus your level. Just three. So. Inflict moderate wounds. So, creature touched effect when laying your hand upon a creature, you channel negative energy that does 2d8 plus three points of damage. Um, so, you just need to roll your melee touch attack, which I believe is d20 plus one. Well, it's been a, a, a d8 uh, there, but that's. Uh, so, say. Pull that. d20 plus one to be able to touch him. So, that's seven. In total, yeah, including the plus one, including the plus one. I've I've rolled a six. I miss him. You would, however, seeing as adds on him, he's not going to be able to apply any sort of either his strength or his dexterity bonus onto his CM. D. So I'm going to say that's a hit because he takes a penalty to that. Um, nice. So yeah, you. So I'm your thundering well. over to him has um, made it <laughs> easier for Lee to get a hold of. Um, so can I get two d eight plus three points of damage while this thing does a quick will save to see if he can halve the damage? You can. I just need to get my d eight dice out. Yes, here's my D8. That that is a five. Yep. And we need another one, don't we? So five plus three, and then it was a plus Eight three, wasn't it? Plus three, so that's eleven. This thing takes eleven damage. It also critically fails. Um so as it falls down, it catches the floor, blood shoots out of its neck, and it just lies in a puddle of its own blood. That's what you get for messing with me, bitch. Damn. <laughs> nice. There's me going. <laughs> <laughs> now I'll prize his ride skill. <laughs> uh, can I... Uh, I suppose we're not in... Um... In battle anymore, are we? So, I'm uh, I'm pretty yeah. wounded at the moment. Am I okay to use one of my level two spells to heal myself? Go for You're... it. So you've used two level two spells, haven't you? How many do you have left? Um, I don't know, but I need to use it. I know that much. Ah, uh, you've got one left. So you've done inflict moderate wounds, and you've done um. What else have you done today? That's your first spell of the day, isn't it? Yeah, this is Sorry, if um, I was thinking of the summon <coughs> monster you did, oh, yeah. but that's the day before you've prayed and you've slept. Um, so yeah, you've got two other, you've got two second level spells left. Brilliant. So my cure light wound. Um, actually, it's do I have a cure moderate wounds or not? Yeah. So cure moderate wounds is a second level spell. You cure, cure light wounds is a first yeah. level spell of which you have four left. Right. So I'm going to use moderate wounds because that's sixteen damage. Uh, so yep. I'm currently on three, aren't I? Yep. So it's two d eight plus three for your cure moderate moderate wounds. Can I um, can I loot the corpse? Yeah, of course you can. Let's do it. I'll... Can we resolve Lee's healing first, and then we'll um, do some corpse looting? But if you want to roll a perception in the meantime, Dave. Um, yeah. Perception, yeah. So Lee, two d eight plus three. How much do you heal by? Do I have a D8? 
This is your D8, Lee. It looks like the diamond. Diamond, yeah. Have it up. It's the one you use for inflict moderate wounds. Yeah, but that's got a that's clearly got a nine on it. Four sides at the top, four sides at the bottom. Show me, Lee. Put the camera. That's clearly got a nine on it, right? No, that's, no, that's your D10. This one. Yeah. It should be the it's your one between your D6 and your D. So the one you've just shown me is this one. You're looking for this one, Lee. Hey, what are we going to put? Oh, is it this little thing here? Uh, new dice. Can't can't get them out of their little things. Yes. Okay. Well, got it. Let's have a look at your die again, Lee. What did you buy? For these. Oh, nice. You bought a similar set to Dave. I got... Uh, they are... The yeah. Paladin. The Paladin role-playing ones. Oh, nice oh one. yeah. They're nice. The, okay, so... Getting distracted. Where's my... Dice for order. So, first one. That, that's a one. That's useless. <laughs> next one. Oh, well, the next one's an eight. So that's nine plus three. Twelve. So twelve. Right. Yeah. You heal by 12. So, <coughs> now you've done that. Dave, what was your perception? Uh, um, 16 in total. 16 in total. You start rummaging through this poor creature's belongings. So let's have a quick look. So this thing has some hide armor on it. The whole thing is is covered in weird, what you thought was possibly its skin and like a an almost um, lumpy kind of substance. It was clearly some of a mixture of its own shed skin, um, sheep skin, etc. It's, it's, it's an amalgamation of different types of hides, um, but it's got this giant hide armor on it. Um, the other thing it has is the tree in its hand, and then as you get into its pockets, I'm just going to quickly roll some loot for it. Okie dokie. Yeah. There we have a, a quick loot generator. So you find a mixture of coins in its pocket. You find a hundred gold pieces. Hundred gold. Yeah. So enough for a cure light wounds potion, certainly. Um, you find sixty silver. Yeah. Five platinum pieces. Five platinum. Yep, and twelve copper. Bloody hell. That'll do me. And that's that's all he's got on him. Just that coinage. Yeah. I'll take. Um, and as you go through his pockets, your high hands get reasonably slimy from the decayed hide that's on his back. It's it's actually disgusting. Wonderful. Any other actions that anyone wants to do? Um, I wish I'll to uh, do a when... sugar cure light wounds, if that's all right. <laughs> What of your potion of cure light wounds, or are you asking yeah. me to do you some cure light wounds? Uh, I presume he'll need to save some of his spells. I'll, I'll chug one of my potions. That's okay, probably cool. Right. Uh, 1d8 plus 1, please add. 6. Cool, you heal by 6. 13, back up to nice. Oh, I'm minted now. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> so you proceed further into the dark, then, do you? Yeah. Well, I think yeah. before we do, let's light, let's light either let's light either Giles or a torch. That's a good plan. Okay. Um, I've got a torch. 
Do we you can always a... light you. We can light me. Um, that's not a problem. <laughs> Making him a giant target. <laughs> but <laughs> what I'm going to do instead... What are you doing over there? I'm going to just touch you and light you up instead. Oh, no! <laughs> I've done it. <laughs> you can resist if you want, Dave, and uh, I go through that struggle. I resist. <laughs> Don't judge me. Just take uh, it. Uh, no, don't resist. <laughs> don't <laughs> Let's have a look on the rules of uh, light. So, object reach effect. This spell causes a touch object to glow like a torch. That's going to be, have to be something on Dave's possession that's going to glow. You're going to have to make a melee touch attack against Dave Lee. So, D20 plus um, one. I can't believe he resisted. <laughs> Unbelievable. Right. Get Don't away from hard. me. Right, so uh, I've ordered 15. So that's 16. 16. He catches you flat footed, Dave, because you weren't expecting it. Um, let's have <laughs> <a quick laughs> your, um, your touch AC minus your dex. Tell me I still avoid him. AC is 15. It's like a void. <laughs> yeah, he's going to get you. So he just what? sort of quickly pokes you and, and lights up your arm. <laughs> and like you, he lights up your shirt or something like that. Right, can I just get away from him? Let's see if anything goes for him. Can I just like hold up an axe and just be like, next one's yours. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, your own words, you are the beefiest character we have. <laughs> don't you don't you use my words against me. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> I am well beefy though. <laughs> so you begin to enter the mine. <laughs> go on, go on, Angelus. You you go first. I'll take points on this one. <sighs> Okay, cool. Oh. And the others you're behind, are you? Oh, yeah. 100%. Cool. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thanks for that. <laughs> so you enter, the, you enter the mine or the cave. Cool. So, shall we move? <laughs> shall we move? Uh, can I roll a perception check? Of course you can. Can I get everyone to roll a perception, actually? Yeah. Uh, 24. Marvellous. Um, Nine. Oh, natural 20! Yeah! So Dave, around you, you can't really see a whole lot. I mean, the light is emanating from you, but also as well, beyond 10, 30 foot, whatever you can see, there isn't a lot you can see other than you know, just cave, cave walls. Um, however, you can hear what sounds like tiny little like tink, 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 tink coming from the path um, to the left of you. Um, and it sounds like there's lots of little tinks, 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 and the heavier sort of grinding of, of metal on, on stone is the sound. Adam... Lee, you can see a bit more, and you can see slightly down the, the cave, and you see like little bits of rock dropping, dirt being flung out. Um, add from what you can see from your position, it looks like something's digging in there. Okay. Can we hear talking or anything? If you listen closely, you can hear... Um... <laughs> Does that br 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 uh, sound human? <laughs> no, it sounds the least human of any other any language you've ever spoken. I'm just going to have a quick look at your languages to see if anyone speaks it. I know, nope. I've got, haven't I got some last like detect language? I don't know what type of spell it is. It'll be an, a spell you'd have to cast, Lee. So no one speaks it naturally, but you hear the. <laughs> It's Lee, yeah. Mm. 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 Go and check it out, Angelus. <laughs> <laughs> it, it might be all right, Angelus. 
You'll be okay. <laughs> sure, what's the worst that could happen? What's the... um... Is that, so that's, that's straight ahead, and there's something to the right. To the right, you're hearing um, the brr, 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 and the digging. You, you, it's oh, quite quiet right. straight ahead. Oh, okay. But it seems to open up straight ahead of you. See, now I want to know what the brr, 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 is. <laughs> <laughs> It's probably like a little chihuahua. It'll be fine. When is he uh, ever a little chihuahua in this game, dude? <laughs> it's like, you know, <laughs> is, there, is there any way of, of getting up to a point where I could sneak and just have a look at what it might be? Yeah, cool. Yeah, if you want to oh, get closer, I'll, I'll, have a, I'll have a stealth from you. I'll stay back here, shall I? Uh, oof. Yes, all the way back. <laughs> <laughs> I will. Well, I'll stay with I'll stay with Giles because since considering that I am lit up like a Christmas tree, twenty five, <laughs> twenty five, <laughs> nice. You're able to sneak closer, and the brr, 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 pretty consistent. How close do you get? How far do you go? Can I can I see visually without them seeing me at any point? So you've got some low light that you can see, but you're going to have to get closer to see a bit further into the place. So move as far as you'd be comfortable, and then we'll talk about what you can see at that point. (laughs) Oh, dear. Okay, so I'll I'll move to here then. Yeah. The darkness covers you lightly, and um, you're able to see a little bit further into this area. Um, In fact, you see a bunch of creatures it looks like and they are um mining away in this little area it is pitch black so these creatures clearly have some sort of good cave vision um but they are just mining away with all sorts of things appropriate or non-appropriate things one of them's using a broken axe someone's using a pickaxe um they're using whatever they can to just mine and mine and mine big metal tools in order to chip off rock and uh, there's a, a, a sort of a more armoured one who's barking at them. Right. Brr, 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 looking really sort of big-headed and smug with himself. His hands are on his hips and he's got a big smile in his face. Brr, 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 and the others just look fucking miserable. Perceptively, like, do they look like they would be aggressive to me? Um, can I get a knowledge nature check from you? Or uh, uh, I suppose they're not doing anything that would cause a sense motive. A knowledge nature is you probably your best bet. Uh, Twenty-two. Cool. You recognise these creatures by their ears. You know them as goblins. You don't know a whole lot about goblins, apart from what you've read in the book about, um, you know, goblins, orcs, and uh, giants. giants. Yeah. Um, but you know that they are generally cowardly creatures. Um, they will gangle pop people, but they generally avoid a conflict. They mostly raid towns to, um, you know, steal livestock, children that have wandered away. Um, to fill their their ravening larders. Can I? <laughs> I might regret this. They have a cruel uh, sense of humour, a, 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 an evil, childish sense of humour. Can I? Can I charge up behind the one barking the orders and smack him over the head with my club? <laughs> yeah, of course you can. <laughs> yeah, cool. Do it. Oh, uh, D twenty to hit, please. Love it. Fifteen. Uh, oh, is that plus six? Is it? Yes. Your so club. Twenty-one. So it's plus three for your club. Oh, uh, not that it matters. Eighteen. You Eighteen. Still hit then, yeah. thing either way. I'm looking for goblin NPC, not goblin character. I mean, it's not even facing them, so. Imagine getting whacked around the back of your head, not not even expecting it. (laughs) Sorry, give me a second. I'm just quickly trying to find the stats for this thing. I thought it'd be the easiest thing to find, but because you can play goblins, they're um, you know a bit annoying to get the yeah. 
There we go, found him. Sorry about that. Uh, so you whack a crack him around the head. What? Well, yeah, okay, you rolled higher than 16, didn't you? Yeah. Uh, can you roll for damage, please? 1d6 plus your strength, which is... Ten. <laughs> um, <laughs> strength modifier is not that Zero. bad. Um, Zero. It, plus one. Plus one for you. Where is you it? Yeah, plus one. Oh, three. <laughs> three. Three. Do we get anything because it would be a surprise attack, is it? Um, so you don't. What you do is you catch him unaware, so you'd get an increased chance of hitting him. Right. Um, so you conk him around the head. And he puts his hands on his head and he shrinks down and he goes, bah, 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 bah. and like you see, he starts to look as miserable as the others. Um, and two of them turn around with a smirk. <laughs> um, they see you, their eyes widen. You're not who they expected to hit this guy. And they go, run and roll, run and roll, run and roll. And the screams echo down the mine. Oh no! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I shout, Angelus and Giles. <laughs> shall we? Um, shall we end it there for the? Uh, oh for the no. <laughs> Oh, perfect! <laughs> oh, oh you can't! <laughs> what? what a place! <laughs> oh, definitely <okay>. yes. <laughs> Mistake number one. <laughs> 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 me. Oh, we're gonna get absolutely. This is where this is where the campaign ends and we die. <laughs> Season two done. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, lovely sound. Nice. <laughs> Welcome to season two. <laughs> oh, yeah. Slightly yeah. more intense than season one. It's a bit different, at least. Right. Thank you for that. It was a, a That's pleasure fine. as always. Uh, no I, I'm assuming we're continuing with this um, season two next campaign Sunday. next Sunday, seven thirty. Yeah. Yeah. If everyone's all right with that. Every yeah. Sunday, yeah, Sunday. Yeah. seven thirty. GMT. Fantastic. We'll leave that there then. Excellent. Thank you very much. Nice. Cheers, Paris. Thank you very much, Paris. Excellent DM as always. Oh, yeah. thank you. I start, Paris.